to reinforce to it that it's guilty. And as soon as the mind is able to, to transcend or to see the, let go of these false beliefs that really are, are inducing the guilt, then witnesses automatically will, will be into the, the world that will show that it's back to the guilt is. Yeah. keep coming back to it. It's ugly out here. It's ugly in here. Yeah. I mean, it has to manifest in a way consistent with what's going on. But it starts in the mind. Right. A lot of times. I, I'm not trying to fix this out here. Yeah. I'm, trying, I'm just saying if I notice that this out here is not fixed, then I also know this in here is not fixed. Yeah. Happy, the happy world or happy dreams is what you're talking about. When the mind is so healed and corrected, it'll be happy, happy dreams. Would you repeat that again about the mind and the brain and the body? Okay. I kind of got lost. Okay, the, the mind is, is very expansive and the mind is very powerful and the mind is not contained you know, in anything. There's one point where Jesus says, you know, you are in the mind of God and God is in your mind. The so mind doesn't follow the, the laws of this world. You know, we kind of think of things as in terms of scale. What, what contains what? You know, is my, is my mind in God's mind or is God's mind in my mind? And, and Jesus says it's both, it's both ways. One mind. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's literally in one mind. But talking about big M and as opposed to little M. Right. And that's, that's the split mind, the small M. But the split mind still is outside the, the body? Cause and effect are simultaneous. Right in other words, the split mind is in the optical illusion that 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 ideas can leave its source and it seems to see a world that has left its source. The, when Jesus says within, he's talking about abstractness. In other words, another way of thinking about it would be like the, the there's a screen out here and that place, you know how you're saying, well where is the mind? That place is a concept that's in the mind. The mind can believe in the concept of time and space and place. And so, and that's, that kind of turns it around in the sense that place is just a concept that's in the mind. Jesus is teaching in here that the, the brain doesn't think, and the brain doesn't have thoughts. The brain is a thought, you know, it's, it's a projection of a, of a thought. You know, the, my thoughts are images I have made. The, the body, the world, and the brain would all be just a projection of a, of a thought, a thought. So that kind of takes it out of the context of, um, once again, all the neurology and the medical model, a lot of times, will will look for with different disorders at, at the brain. There's certain lobes that you can activate and everything, and it's still, once again, in a subtle way, looking for the cause of things in the brain. And basically, what the course does is it takes it metaphysically back to the mind, where where the thoughts are. So that's why it's important. Other than that, you know, you could fall into traps about well, somebody is in a coma or unconscious, you know. It seems like at times that that shuts off all communication. And we're just so used to communication <laughs> being through the senses. And, the, and here comes the Course and it's saying communication is at a, at a thought level or a mind level. So we're using our brain though to get in touch with the mind. And the other way, how are we getting in touch with the Holy Spirit or, you know, how are we even using the body as communication? Well, once again, it's the, the brain is just neutral to the Holy Spirit. but. A lot of times you hear things in a lot of the New Age literature about right brain and left brain. You know, sometimes right brain is more intuitive, left brain is more analytical. What the Course literally does is it takes it from right brain, left brain, and it lifts it out of the context of talking about brains, and Jesus talked about right mind and wrong mind. But literally, that's where we really can come to the release, because the wrong mind is, is all backwards. That's what we were talking about earlier. That it's, it believes that the screen is the cause and that the state of mind is the effect. And the right mind sees that everything is just a decision in mind. So in that sense, it's just important to, to, to really get clear on the right mind and the wrong mind. And then you can let go of the wrong mind. Because once you can see it for what it is, you let go of it. Remember our, our beginning of our discussion, we were talking about decision, and where decision is. Now, remember the discussion about the, the blue shirt or the, the green shirt or whatever? Now that's it seems as if, it certainly does seem as if, that, that we're persons and we're making decisions every day, not between just shirts, but, you know, between lots of things. So what are you saying? That's all in the script. Yeah. And, and basically, only... you were saying, well, what do I really have a choice on? Remember, we addressed that as well, that, that ultimately, if you really follow the Course in and you really train your mind, it will come back, beneath all the beliefs, comes back to, I'm a mind and I'm making a choice between the Holy Spirit or the ego. I'm making that choice every second, but it but it doesn't seem that way. Sometimes it seems like our emotions, you know, all of a sudden get stirred up, and we don't even know what happened. We can't even think of the trigger. 
events or just feel like a melancholy, there's all these beliefs in the mind that have to be looked at because here, you know, the decision is being made at a very deep level at the basement, and then it's coming filtering up through the, uh, we were using one example of, here it is, to make the choice for the Holy Spirit of the ego, it comes up, you know, time, space, bodies, oh, I'm a man, I'm a Cincinnatian, and, but I'm over in Indianapolis now, and I'm speaking out of, out of unity on a course miracle, you know, and it kind of comes out on the surface like that, but basically, you know, the decision is being made at a, at a very deep level. This, doesn't the Course also say you can make the decision in a split second or even less and then immediately your mind forgets that it made it and so therefore you see it as not having been yes. happened to you, that you had no yes. power in the decision, it happened to That's me. in 136, that's consecutive defense. Yeah. Literally, you wave, yeah. it's like the mind waves the wand and then it quickly dissociates and forgets what it is. Well, my thing uh, is, uh, Ken Wapnick says this, well, why would anyone want to be here? So, if, we, if we're all going to get sick, unless some of them progress to a state where we can just leave the world without getting sick, 99.99999% of us get sick and leave this world, right? Well, it, it still assumes that we're in, that we come in right. Yeah. but. It's kind of like there's, there's lessons that are really high in the workbook where it says, when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. Right. Or there is still a pervading belief kind of in the mind that somehow thinks, all right, I'm taking the course. There's all these other people that are out there doing the best that they can, but I'm working on this path. And that eventually, if I really continue with this and follow it all the way and accept the atonement, then I'll leave the world. But there'll still be this world going on back there that's, <laughs> still twisted and everything, but I'll, but I'll be out of it. And what the, what the Course is saying is, the world is the hallucination. When you accept the atonement for yourself, then the it will get real bright in the sense that your perception will be healed, true perception of the real world, and then the world will fade and disappear. You see how different that is from, from a, a sense of like coming into the world as a soul or a person, to the sense that it's my hallucination. Hey, that makes it simple. When I accept the correction and the healing, then the hallucination will be over. The thing that, that is so difficult is that the deceived mind believes that there really is an objective world, a real objective world that I came into and now I'm going to go out of. And then it's like it's going to continue on. But Jesus is saying, there is no world apart from your own mind. Well, see, my husband says to me, okay, so there's no world and it's all a big dream, so what does it matter what you do anyway then? And that always leaves me stumped, you know, and I say yeah. things like, well, it's because you have some you have some lessons to learn, and he says, no, 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 he says, you say this is a dream, I don't have to worry about what I do, this is all a big dream, and no matter what I do, when that body goes, I go, I'm at home anyway, so, you know, and I never know <laughs> Well, I think Christ answered that real clearly. He said, you know, you're either love God and love each other mankind. Yeah. That's, that's pretty clear. But if you don't, you'll get back. And the thing about doing, remember how we talked about the two levels? Yeah. It's so common to, to say, you know, what should I do or what shouldn't I do? But you know how we see that still at the behavior level, where Jesus says, is like, the whole point of the Course is to think like God. You know, that, that to start to think like God, which would be the Holy Spirit's thought system, you know, where he says, think like me, use me as your model for learning. Mm -hmm. But it takes it away from, why do we do anything, from the do question to, well, all I know is that I'm trying to align my mind with my Father's will, or I'm trying to think only the thoughts that I think with God. There's a lot of metaphysical systems, and in fact, New Age systems that will, you've seen them on magazines, create your own reality. Now, in on the one sense, Jesus does talk, that we were talking about at the beginning, was there's, there's, the law in the kingdom is what you extend you are. And he says what happens is when it comes through the ego lens and gets twisted in this realm, it's what you project you will believe. So in other words, if you have a, an attack thought in your mind, you can't stand to keep that in the mind. It's too intolerable, so I'll project it out onto the screen. Now, the big difference between the, the course and a lot of things, and this is where you get into level confusion again, this is very subtle, but you know, I create my own reality, you know, if you are if you mean by reality in terms of the script or whatever, there is level confusion because the Course says that all creation is is entirely spirit. In other words, we talked about the Father creates the Son, creates the creations. 
the danger comes in is when, when I say I create my own reality, then the guilt comes in. Because that's where the New Age thoughts will come in, is like I've created my own sickness. Lesson number two of the Course. I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has. There is no objective world kind of out there, which it sure seems like it, in which events cause us to feel certain ways, but that it's all our beliefs <coughs> and our expectations and their meanings that we read into them. As soon as you can just start to grasp that principle, just in the slightest, then you start to see, this is my way to empowerment. If, if all my upset comes from a misperception, and Jesus can help me get clear and heal this perception and get in touch with these false ideas and beliefs that I have, then that's my point of power. I can actually reach a place where there's nothing, I, I won't be upset by anything. It or reminds I me too of that. Is. <laughs> yeah, there's a part of the Course where Jesus talks about questions. And he says there are these things called double questions, that the ego really is a statement, you know, because it asks and answers. Mm -hmm. We just got the answer already built in the question. You're always asking um, one of two questions. You know, one of them might be worded, "Do I want to know God's will for me?" Which is a real open, open-ended question to receive the Spirit's guidance. And the and the other one is, which of these illusions will fill my lack? You know. And whenever we start striving for things in this world, or, or that's where all the outcomes come in, that's where the expectations come in, really the deeper question in the mind is, is already, the presumption is lack. And then on top of that one is which of these illusions, which of these idols will fill my lack? And whenever we go through a day and we, we get all in an upset mode, it's like that's the question in, in somewhere in our mind that we're asking. If I'm working on a project, let's say, and I get all the way halfway through it and I don't have the tools that I need, and so I get upset, you know, instead of, uh, you know, what is God's will for me in this, you know, the question is, is somewhere in the mind is like, I've already decided that I need to finish my project for a happy day. <laughs> and therefore, and that's part of the thing, that's part of the illusion that I'm going to need to be happy, to get the project finished, and therefore I'm going to perceive not having the right tool as, a, as an obstruction to my happiness, and you can see where mm -hmm. it all comes back to the question that I'm asking in my mind, that it slowly we, we let go of, of the cravings and desires for things in this world, believing that they will bring us happiness, then we, we're free of expectation. Therefore, you know, you can more likely appreciate all things work together for good. But if I've got a big investment, you know, and things have to go this way, why? If I'm driving along and, and I'm, I'm trying to get to a business meeting and a train comes along and I see it coming and the train comes along, it just is in the sense that the train just coming and going. But if I perceive myself as losing my job because I'll be late for work because of this darn train, da 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 da, -da you can see where the thoughts. You can get into it the, the, from that misperception. You know, I can really work myself into a good upset. I, when I start doing that, when I have all these outcomes and goals and self-concept things, then I, I can't see the divine order in that train. You know, because that train is is an obstacle. It's perceived as an obstacle to something that I want more than the peace of God. That's pretty pretty heavy duty, but it's like when you start to do that with everything, pretty soon it's, it's kind of like setting things up to be the keeper of your peace. Yeah. You know, this thing is the key to my peace. And then you also can blame that thing, you see, for not having peace. And the truth is, peace is at hand. A lot of times people will get into this when they think about, um, wait a minute now, if the world's an illusion and I like birds chirping and I like sunsets with all these pastels and colors and everything, you know, there's sometimes people have a little bit of a of a difficulty with, you know, I want God to be in that sunset, darn it. <laughs> you know, it's like, I like that sunset. And what the Course is saying is, is you really have to bring it back to a question of purpose. Because if we literally said that God's in, in nature, and God's in sunsets, and God's in um, quiet rivers and blowing trees or whatever, and then we said, well, maybe he's not quite so apparent in, in concentration camps, and in, in ghettos, and in man-made concrete structures like downtown buildings, you see how we would be caught again because we would be limiting our peace of mind to 
those nice scenic, so-called scenic areas.